another episode of Video Dojan Classroom. In this episode, I'm going to teach you all how to fold a fish with origami. Uh, I have a square piece of origami paper here. These are actually um, ya, which are arrows. These are the fletching on the arrows. Uh, it's a common uh, print for origami paper. So just to review, we have a square piece of paper that on one side has a pattern and the other side is completely white. Uh, you can just use any uh, perfectly square piece of paper. That will work fine also. Uh, but I'm using the origami paper just to be a little bit more traditional. Alright, so to start this, uh, folding this fish. By the way, the fish is one of three different origamis that we teach our youth students in our summer camp programs. So that's why I'm uh, doing this one in addition to a past episode where I covered how to fold a water bomb. So we have to start with a preliminary base and those of you that don't know what that is, uh, I'm going to do it anyway so you can see. But basically we're going to take our piece of paper and we're going to fold it completely in half. Now when you do your folds in origami, make sure that everything lines up as straight as possible and make sure you have good creases each time you crease the piece of paper. So now that we fold this in half, we're going to unfold it and we are going to fold it in half, turn the paper 90 degrees and fold it in half again. So we're actually going to be making a plus sign with the folds that we've made. Okay, perfect. And when I open this, as you can see, uh, these by the way are called valley folds because if I let it sit, it forms a valley. You can see our two valley folds actually make a plus sign. Now I'm going to turn the piece of paper over and I'm going to fold it in half, but this time making a triangle instead of a rectangle. Again, make sure that your sides match up perfectly or as close as possible. And then I'm going to unfold it and I'm going to again fold it in half. This time I'm going to be making a another plus, but 90 degrees from what, actually 45 degrees from what the other one was. And I'm going to unfold it again. So, as you can see, I have some valley folds on this side. Uh, if I take and set it up uh, so that it's um, like a hill, this is actually how I would start a water bomb base, but I want a preliminary base, so I'm just going to take my finger and push down in the center and flip this over. And then I'm just going to pinch up all the pieces and I'm going to lay it flat on the ground. So I now have a, uh, if I'm laying it here, I have a diamond with a line through the center. Uh, I don't want to have a, a square, I want to have the diamond with a line with the open part facing me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these corners, not both of them, see there's one underneath still, but I'm going to take one of these corners and I'm going to fold it up so that I fold it right on the existing line, the line that's already on, that I already folded to make the preliminary base. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to match this up. Okay, so now as you can see uh, on the top layer I have uh, something that almost looks like a kite. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And on the opposite side. Okay, so now I have my kite. And what I'm going to do now is do another base. Uh, it's sometimes referred to as a bird, bird base, bird beat base, uh, any number of names along those lines. And the way this works is these two flaps, I'm going to, before I actually do that, I'm going to do an extra step that isn't really necessary, but it'll help people who are somewhat newer at this. Uh, I'm going to take this top right here, I'm going to fold it down, so right on the line uh, that my other two folds created. I'm just going to fold it down, crease it, and then unfold it again. And this will help with the next uh, fold I'm going to do. So I'm going to open the doors, 
these two flaps, almost like they're doors, and I'm going to take the top piece of paper out and fold it up. And as you can see, it kind of looks like the mouth of a bird. And I'm going to then flatten it out, making sure that it goes on the creases that already exist. So basically, the creases that already exist are being folded back the opposite direction. So, right like this. And as you can see, if I open it up a little bit, it does kind of look like a bird's mouth. So then, once I have that, I'm just going to fold it back down so it looks exactly the same as it did before, except uh, there's no crease here. I mean, there's no opening here anymore. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to, again, this isn't a step I would normally do, but fold this top part down and then unfold it and it will help you with the next uh, portion of this. Open the doors, pull the top piece out, and fold the, on the folds that already exist, just the opposite direction. Make sure it's nice and flat and fold the piece down again. Perfect. So now I have a kite that on both sides doesn't have an opening. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fold the, the, this tip right here up to the top, but don't crease this very hard. Just lightly crease this because we're going to unfold this and we don't really want a strong crease there. So I fold the tip all the way up to the top so that tip meets the very top of of the um, piece of paper, the, the kite that I have. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this tip over to the left side. And I'm, I'm going to do that by actually turning it over this way. So I want the crease to go all the way to this corner. So if I actually put my <coughs> finger down there, I can crease it right along that diagonal like that, all the way over the corner. And this you can crease, put a good crease in. So as you can see, this is going to my left hand side. Now I'm going to fold this corner, I mean this tip, over to this tip on this side. So I go to the left first, then the right. And I'm going to do that by putting my finger on top of this whole piece so that it basically is going to fold under as I'm folding this over. And I fold it all the way over to the other side. And as you can see, that piece that was here, so this is where how it was, I folded it over and folded that piece underneath. Now I'm going to fold this whole thing back down and kind of rub out that crease that was there already. As you can see when I rub it like that it just goes away because I didn't put a hard crease in. You can actually put a harder crease in all the pieces you just folded if you want to. Alright good, now we flip it over and fold the bottom tip up to the top, lightly crease, fold that tip over to the left side. I apologize for the background noise. That's my dog running around. And you can put a hard crease in that. Then fold the tip over to the right side, pushing underneath the part that was that you've already folded. Making sure the crease goes all the way to the diagonal. And unfold it and then rub that part just like before and then crease again making sure the creases are all hard. Alright, so now we have that kite but with two little points sticking out. Okay, now what we're going to do is very similar to the uh, first folds we did once we had our preliminary base is I'm going to take this tip here and I'm going to fold this side right to the center line like this. And do the same thing with the other side. And then I'm going to flip it over, so I have this now, I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side as well. Both right and left sides of this side.
Perfect. And this is what I have up to this point. There's only two more things to do until we're finished. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up the piece that I have and I'm going to basically I'm going to open this side flap up and stick my finger in there to pop this out completely and refold it on the fold that was already there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So I open up these two pieces, stick my finger in, and pop that out. And now I have my fish. Thank you for watching. See you next time on Video Dojong Classroom.